Every year from October to May, a small fleet of fishermen work the offshore waters of southwest Florida, harvesting one of the state's most prized delicacies, stone crabs. Nearly three million pounds of stone crabs were pulled from Florida's waters last year with a dockside value of more than $18 million. Despite the staggering size of the catch, stone crabs are flourishing. Unlike other fisheries, this catch is returned to the water alive. Stone crabs can regenerate their claws, so only these tasty limbs are removed, making the crustaceans a renewable resource that can be harvested several times. The future of the stone crab is solid. The stone crab species-wise is much more solid than the fisherman is. That's how long the fishermen can afford to do it. We're still hanging in there, but uh, as costs keep going up, and uh, it's a high dollar product because there's a lot of expenses to produce the product. Although the crabs can only be harvested from October 15th to May 15th, the backbreaking work of stone crabbing is a year-round business. During the off-season, in the heat of the summer, each trap must be cleaned and prepped for the next crabbing season. For small-scale operators like Daniel Doxey, that means prepping 1,500 traps. Larger operators will have to prep eight times that number. Well, you have to scrape them first thing, look for repairs, replace the eat-out board if it needs it, the ropes, and check all the ropes for chafing, you gotta retie everything, and you've gotta paint the buoys if you of your color, if it's wore down. You gotta paint the trap with bottom paint to keep from it growing up. By law, the heavy-duty plastic traps must be fitted with an eat-out board, a specially designed escape hatch made of thin wood that the crabs can chew through if the trap is lost. Most crabbers lose about 10% of their traps, either from storms or from boat props cutting off the marker buoys. State-issued tags with a crabber's license number must be affixed to every trap. That same number is also burned into the trap, painted on the crabber's boat, and carved onto each buoy. The more traps you got, the more it costs. It'll cost probably at least $5 a trap, and then I got to do the labor free. In early October, the crabbers begin the laborious process of setting up shop in the Gulf. Each trap has a cement base for stability and weighs about 60 pounds, so the heavy load must be carefully balanced. At sea, the traps are baited with pig's feet, a tough, long-lasting lure that can attract crabs for weeks. Knowing where to put the traps takes experience and luck. Sometimes we get lucky and stay on top of them, and we act like we're very clever when we do it, but we're lucky, you know. And we understand the, the, the way that they're moving. We say we see trends in our lines. You know, you'll start a line, sometimes lines will be, you know, 10, 12 miles long with 400 traps. Once the traps are set, the winter season routine begins. For large-scale operators like Bill Pilger, who has 4,000 traps, it's more than a full-time job. Usually it takes us about two hours to get where we're going, actually, to get out to the trap lines. So we'll start pulling around eight. We usually pull till about four. Two hours back in, we're back at the dock around six. So it's about a 12-hour cycle from start to finish. We'll pull around 600 a day, five to 600 a day. Uh, that's our day. Just on my operation, uh, it costs me about $700 a day when I take the ropes off in the morning. I'm already $700 in the hole to start with. So uh, that's why I have to go out there. I got to pull five, 600 traps. In other words, I, you know, I have, to, have to make enough money to make it pay. Removing the catch from the trap is done so quickly, the crabs rarely have time to fight back. But on the way back to the dock, when the claws are being removed, that's when the crew has to be careful. The uh, best way I can describe it is like closing your finger in a car door. Usually, if, if they just nick you and you can slam them off fast enough, you're okay, but maybe once a year, one really gets hold of you good and it hurts, believe me, it hurts. Claws must be at least two and three quarter inches long to be legally removed, and both claws can be taken. Since the crabs can naturally drop their claws as a survival mechanism, experienced crabbers know how to remove the claws without damaging the crabs allowing the claws to grow back within a year. Back at the dock, the claws are cooked immediately at the fish house, chilled and grated by size. The crabbers are then paid by the pound. About 120 stone crabbers work Southwest Florida's waters. Most come from families who have fished in Southwest Florida for generations. 
I was just born into it. That's what we did. That was what my family did. We were all fishermen, and my dad was stone forever, so I followed it and got into the business when I was young. I think I've been pulling traps since I was 13, and I've had my permit since I was 14. So I just, it's just something I love doing. Although Dennis Doxey and his son Daniel both crab on their own boats, they augment their income by working as crew on larger boats. I like taking a net fishing away, the group are fishing away. One thing after another, and it all adds up to where we wind up not having a full work schedule. Many of the fishermen began focusing on stone crabs in the early 1990s, after the state banned most types of net fishing. Ironically, the industry that began in the 1940s as a way to make money off a net-tangling nuisance species now offers commercial fishermen one of the few ways left of making a living on the water in southwest Florida. Despite the long hours and back-breaking work, these dedicated fishermen keep going back to sea. Yeah, we just finished pulling out there to the north. Actually, looked pretty good. Just... Oh yeah, we, we, we chatter back and forth on the radio. You know, uh, figure, well, yeah, maybe I should have done something different in school, you know. <laughs> maybe I should have paid attention more. But the real truth of the matter is, we're commercial fishermen at heart. We love what we do, and there, there would be no change in it if we had to take our job. All we want to do is be able to go fish, produce a good product, and make a living. But it's a tough way to make a living, even with a high dollar product. They're expensive, but if you come with me in bad weather, and watch what we have to do to produce them and bring them to the dock and, and process them and put them up here, you'd think it was a hell of a deal. <laughs> That's no doubt about it. It's a part of Southwest Florida. I mean, if you come to Southwest Florida and you don't eat stone crabs, it's kind of like going to Maine and not having a fresh lobster. Despite the cost, the black-tipped claws are in high demand, but the future of local stone crabbers is unclear. Stone crabs is an industry that has been going on for a long time here, and it is indigenous to southwest Florida. There's not a whole lot of fishermen left doing it. I don't see a lot of young men coming up in their father's footsteps. Crabs, they all cost so much, and you got to replenish them every season. Unless you have a good crab season, pull yourself a menial paycheck, but pull yourself thirty or $40,000 so you can replenish your, your supplies. You're not, and keep your boat up, you're not going to make it. You know, so it's, it just scares me for the future. As long as any of us can afford to do it, we're going to do it. If we hit the lotto, we always kill each other and say, if we ever hit the lotto, we can afford to fish till we die. <laughs> <laughs>